Hey everyone, it's John here, and in this video we're going to take a look at how we can create dependent drop-down lists using the new dynamic array functions in Excel. Now, before we get started, make sure you hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel for future Excel videos like this one. Now, let's get started. So here I've got two drop-down lists. So I've got a drop-down list for a car make and a car model. And the second drop-down list for the car model, the choices that I'm going to be able to choose from are actually going to depend on the selection in the first drop-down list. So here I've got Ford selected. And in my second drop-down list, I've only got Ford models available. So I can choose Ford Mustang maybe. And if we come back up here and select a different make, so let's try Mazda. And if we select from the model, we only have options for Mazda models. So we can maybe choose Mazda 3 there. And so the values that I'm able to choose in my second drop-down list here are going to depend on the selection from my first drop-down list. So let's take a look at how we can build this. Now, before we can start building our drop-down lists, we're going to need to make sure that our source data for those drop-down lists is organized properly. And so because we have two drop-downs, we're going to need a table of two columns. So we're going to need one column for our make and another column for our car model. And then each row in this table is going to represent a potential option in our second drop-down list. So for example, we've got a list of all the BMW models and the corresponding values in the make column would just be BMW for all four of those. Similarly, we've got a list of all our Chevrolet models. And again, the corresponding value in the make column would just be Chevrolet for those. So we're gonna to need to organize all our make and model data in that fashion. And once we've got that set up, we can start building our drop-down lists. So the first thing we're gonna do is use a unique function, and that's gonna allow us to just grab all the unique values from our make column here. So to do that, we're gonna use the new unique dynamic array function. And the first argument in that function is the array of values that we want to get our unique values from. So we want to return a list of all the unique makes. So we're going to reference that column. And we've got a couple optional arguments, but if we leave those out, we actually get exactly what we want. So we just get a list of all the unique values in our make column. And now this is a dynamic array function. So all our results are going to spill here dynamically. So for example, if something changes in our source data and we get a new make in our data, then notice we're going to increase our range here. And that value is now included in our set of unique values. Let's just undo that. And with this list of unique values, we're now ready to make our first drop-down list. So we can go over here where we want our drop-down list and we can go up to the data tab and go to data validation. And here we're going to choose a list as our validation criteria. And here our source is going to be equal to this cell right here. So E3, but we want to reference the entire range of unique values. And to reference the range of values from a dynamic array, all we need to do is use the hashtag symbol after the reference to our first cell. And now this here is going to reference the entire range in a dynamic fashion. So if this grows or shrinks, then we're still gonna be referencing the complete range. So let's press okay and see what happens. So we get our drop-down list and you can see here that we have the ability to select any of those values now. And just as a test, let's try changing one of these values. So here our list grows. And if we check our 
drop down list, we can see that we have that new option there, Acura. So let's just undo that again. And now the second step we're going to do is create another range of values to select our model from. So this time we're going to use the filter function, which is another dynamic array. And we're going to be filtering our model column. And we want to filter it on the make. So we want to filter it whenever the make is equal to our selection in our drop down list. So that's in J3. And if we press enter, again, it's dynamic array. So those values are going to spill down. And let's check this out. So let's try selecting something else. So let's try selecting Ford. And our dynamic array is going to update accordingly. And Hyundai. We've only got one choice there. Let's try Dodge. Here we get a couple choices. And now we can create a new drop down list based on this range here. So let's try that. Let's select the cell we want our drop down list in. And again, let's go up to the data tab and data validation. And again, we're going to select a list. And we're going to set it equal to G3. And again, we're going to use the hashtag symbol to reference the entire dynamic range. And let's press OK. And here's our list. And let's try this out. So let's try Pontiac as our first choice. And here we get two choices now, Grand Prix or Grand Am. Let's try BMW, and here we get a couple choices, so we can choose our 5 Series. So that's how we can create dependent drop-down lists using the new dynamic array functions. So we just needed to create two dynamic arrays here, so one with the unique function to get a list of unique values in our first drop-down list, and then our second dynamic array function we use the filter function to filter our models based on the choice in our first drop down list here. And now let's try adding some data to this list. So I've got some data here for Volvo. If I drag that up into my table, that's now in the table. And we can see that flow through in our dynamic arrays here. So that's added as another unique value. And we can now select that option here. So let's try Volvo. And here we get a list of all the possible Volvo models in our data. And now we can choose those from here. So that's how we can create dependent drop down lists in Excel. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. That's it for this video. See you guys next time.